The Congo River Rapids are one of the most unique habitats in the world and have their own spectacular fish fauna. To live in a river with this much current, many species have had to adapt to either become very strong swimmers or evolve to live in the shallow crevices or on top of the boulders with the help of unique body and fin shapes. For those of you that watch the Shingu River videos, you already know what an important role horizontal crevices play, with so many species tied to those spaces. In the Congo, with even more current, there is a whole fish community living in those gaps. The Congo, like the Amazon and Mekong, is a silty whitewater river. When you dive down around 2 meters or 7 feet, you see nothing. Almost no light penetrates this depth. Vision and color is not so important for the fish. Instead, we find fish adapted, with reduced swim bladders, flattened bodies, often living deep in the crevices created by cracked boulders and sheets of bedrock. It is kind of easy to mimic this environment in the aquarium, because any flat rocks stacked on top of each other will result in those horizontal gaps. Different angles also create crevices with more or less current that can be occupied by different species. Much of the middle Congo, from the capitals of Brazzaville and Kinshasa, downstream to nearly the western central African coast, consists of extreme rapids, because the large, wide Congo sector known as the Malibo Pool squeezes into a narrow canyon with sheets of bedrock and gigantic boulders on either side. Perhaps the most surprising thing is that some of our well-known aquarium fish, such as Nanochromus parallus or Phenacogrammus interruptus, the Congo tetra, occur here, not in the slow-moving or clear little streams like many Apistogramma or Hephysoburcon in South America. The most well-known cichlids from the Congo are the buffalo heads. Just downstream of the Malebo pool, that means Steatocranus casuarius, Gibiceps and Tunanti. They live in the shallow rapids, grazing on algae and insect larvae living in the river weed plants. These cichlids are easy to catch year-round and occur throughout the rapids in the thousands. And as you move away from this point, just below the pool, the species composition changes. Both Steatocranus, the riverine Lamprologus, Nanochromus, and Teleogramma occur in overlapping distributions, with some hard to distinguish forms in the overlapping sectors. The cichlid species list sort of shifts upstream and downstream of the Malibo pool. Buffalo heads are incredibly hardy cichlids, and all of the species remain reasonably small. While they can be shy in the aquarium, they are still fun to watch and relatively easy to breed. These Steatocranus tenanti, or slender buffalo heads, are just starting to mature. The males do not yet show the extremely elongated fins and large nuchal humps on their foreheads. These shallow areas are also home to Gara congica, labios, and a number of Cynodontes adapted to the rapids, such as Cynodontes prichardii. Gara are excellent algae eaters, and unlike some of the slender labios, they are a bit less aggressive when adult. Like many sucker mouth cyprinids from Asia, once they are sexually mature, these fish can be extremely aggressive, and some of the Congolese labios reach more than 1 foot or 30 centimeters in length. I have a somewhat conflicted relationship with these fish, because they are quite beautiful and interesting, but the moment they start to look really nice, they end up too aggressive to keep them with anything else. I set up an aquarium for some of the Congo Rapids fish to see if it is possible to create a community long term, and there'll be a video of the results in the future. Make sure to like and subscribe to see the update and how that experiment worked out. Steatocranus are easy to breed in the aquarium, but I wonder how they fare if they are Teleogramma, Spiny Eels, Synodontis Catfish and some others in their aquarium. With increasing depth, the cichlid community changes. In the dark, deep crevices, Teleogramma brichardi and Teleogramma depressum seem to be the dominant cichlid species. These relatively small cichlids have a reputation for being aggressive, but I think that is not entirely correct. In nature, they occur in water where they would not see each other at all, with crevices stacked on top of each other like a parking garage, and water blowing through them. In a small aquarium with still and clear water, Teleogramma tend to target each other. Given enough space and the right type of shallow and narrow spaces, they get along well, and often raise babies that remain deeper in the crevices than their parents. 
This is not unlike the cryptic plecos in the Xingu, fish such as the zebra pleco or Ancestrus ranunculus that never leave the crevice and are essentially safe from most predators throughout much of their life cycle. Teleogramma depressum is a little bit harder to find because it lives deeper and the body shape is a little bit more extreme, so my community tank will have 10 of these. This video shows nicely how these compressed cichlids can squeeze into narrow gaps between rocks. Not only does this keep them safe from predators, it also allows them to get out of the very strong current in the rapids. They are not great swimmers, and with their reduced swim bladders they sink when they try to swim. I found that they show very little aggression towards other fish, even other cichlids, unless they are breeding and defending a cave that has young. After some weeks in the aquarium, they will come out of their hiding places and often sit on top of the rocks or at the entrance of their cave. In breeding color, the females develop a pink or red belly and bright white flag on the upper part of the tail. The males remain more drab black or slate gray color. The females do most of the courtship and try to entice the males to a cave. Like Julidochromis from Lake Tanganyika, they can raise several broods of different sizes and ages at the same time. The Congo is not only home to unique fish, they are also bizarrely shaped mollusks and several species of freshwater crabs. This should be the first video of Arimanotopus brase, a small bluish white colored crab associated with the rapids, at least according to the fishermen. It is my first time keeping this species and at least so far they appear less aggressive than the freshwater crabs from Malawi and South America that I have attempted to keep. Perhaps this species would be worth a try with some fish. In the past, there has always been the same issues. Either the crabs are catching and eating the fish, or the larger fish eat the crabs when they molt. Let's see how these guys will do long term. This species seems mostly aquatic. It does not need to get out to the surface to breathe, and they're not overly aggressive with each other. This concludes part one. I hope you enjoyed some of the odd fish you've seen so far. Subscribe and sign up for notifications from my channel to see part two soon with the blind eels, blind catfish and the blind cichlids.